It's just possible that this girl will have more time on Earth than anyone who's ever lived. She might live for a thousand years. Immortality, the quest for more time, is a dream that has driven humanity for generations. We search for the elixir of life. Would I be the first one trying it? And we yearn for the lost time that lingers on in our memory. Over here, my God, these are the old classrooms. <laughs> I haven't been here in 50 years. Now, finally, in the 21st century, this search for more time might be over. Because scientists are beginning to crack the secrets of how time changes us day by day. And as we understand time, eventually there'll be no limit on how long we might live. Like every human who's ever lived, I know one thing for certain. One day, I don't know when, my time will run out. No matter how well I treat my body, no matter how well I eat or how well I exercise, I know that my body will fail and one day I will die. Of all time's effects on us, the most profound is that one day it will end. Our time is limited, so our time is precious. In this program, I'm going to look at what that means for us, how the knowledge of our limited time has shaped us as humans. I'm a theoretical physicist. And I live here in Manhattan. It's a place where time is always in short supply. I want to know if our time on Earth, our lifespan, has to be limited. And if we could hold back the march of time, what would it mean for us? What would it mean to be immortal? We may not feel the effects of time changing us day by day, but we know that it does. And it's more than just the physical aging of our body on the outside. Our sense of time itself seems to change as we get older. Many of us get the feeling that life is speeding up. So let's start with a simple question. Is this just something we imagine? Or is time really running faster for us as we get older? Well, the only way to find out is to do an experiment. So here we are in the middle of Midtown Manhattan. We're doing a little experiment that uh, may be fun and you might be interested. We're trying to measure the duration of time, how people perceive the duration of a minute. But we have a theory that says that our perception of time either speeds up or slows down with age. Uh, I have a stopwatch here, and I'll ask you to count to a minute, and we'll see how close you get. Okay. Well, let's start the experiment right now. One Minnesota. Three. Eight thousand, nine thousand, ten thousand, eleven. One thing I liked about this experiment is that you can assign numbers to it. It's quantifiable. So many times when we talk about the passage of time, it gets very touchy-feely. It gets very subjective. Here's an experiment where you can actually test it. 55, 6, 60. One minute. You're under by uh, about 12 seconds. 10 seconds under. under. You're under by about 6 seconds. 6 seconds. So 
our young people are tending to time a minute too quickly. They're finishing before their minute is up. Uh -huh. Nine seconds over. Three seconds over. Three seconds. Nineteen seconds over. Over. Oh, my goodness. By contrast, oh, our older people finish counting well after a minute has passed. In other words, they're marking time much more slowly. Well, I'll spend it well. <laughs> and this has a dramatic effect on the way we see the world. It turns out that the internal clock that we have inside our brain is actually slowing down the older we get. And as the ticking begins to wind down, as the ticking of our clock begins to wind down, everything else seems to speed up. This disconcerting feeling that the world is beginning to run on ahead of us is a very direct reminder that one day, after about 80 years or so of living, we'll stop altogether. Our time will have run out. But does our time have to run out? Why can't we just go on forever? It's a question we've asked for centuries. After all, in nature, some things seem to have an almost endless lifetime. I'm looking for the oldest inhabitant on Earth here on the edge of the Sierra Nevada in California. It's one of these bristlecone pine trees, so ancient that it has a name, Methuselah. It's nearly 5,000 years old. The Methuselah tree is 4,781 years of age. It's staggering to believe this tree could be older than the pyramids, older than recorded history itself. It's magnificent. Amazingly, it's still fertile. Bury this pine cone and you will have a baby bristlecone pine, but its parent is almost 5,000 years old. That's a vast amount of time. So the question is, what's stopping us from living that long? What is it that determines how much time we have on Earth? To find an answer, meet Cyril, the boy racer of the animal world. Cyril is a brown mouse. His fast lifestyle is driven by his biology. His heart pulses at 650 beats per minute. He breathes 160 times a minute. His metabolic rate is so high that he burns himself out. This frenetic lifestyle of his, it's all over within two years. He's one of the shortest living of all mammals. In that time, he has to live a whole life. He's a father at three months, a grandparent at six months. It's as if he was designed to do everything in fast forward, as if his time is biologically predetermined. Cyril truly lives fast and dies young. He's just 12 months old. Cute little critter, isn't he? However, within a year, he'll probably be dead. In other words, it does seem as if he is programmed to die. Across the animal kingdom, the story is the same. Each species has a pretty much fixed lifespan. From mayflies, who have just one day to enjoy the spring sunshine, to have sex just once and die, to elephants, who often have 70 years. Life and death seems to follow a pattern. 
So time, it would appear, is a precious commodity that is strictly limited. By biology.